Hey everybody, Michael here with the Sky's the Limit Aviation Channel. Welcome. Today I'm starting a series of videos related to Flight Simulator, mainly Flight Simulator 10. These will also apply to Flight Simulator 2004. Do not expect any Microsoft Flight Simulator videos in the near future because that's a program I don't have yet and my computer is not powerful enough to run it. So maybe in the future we'll have some newer Microsoft Flight Simulator stuff, but there's still a lot of people who fly FSX and FS2004, so I'm going to show you some basics. Starting today, in this video, we're going to be starting with the GPS system, which is the Garmin 500. And here we are inside the cockpit of November 725 Whiskey Foxtrot. It's just a simple Cessna 172. We're sitting on the ramp at KLZU Airport, which is Gwinnett County Briscoe Field in Lawrenceville, Georgia. Just a few miles down the road from me, it's my closest airport. So we're going to pull up the GPS, and to get to the GPS, you go to the left-hand side of the cockpit panel, and you'll see these little icons over here. You're going to look for the one with the radar dish. That's going to be your GPS navigation. Just click on it, and up pops the GPS. We're going to go over all the buttons that are on the right-hand side and the bottom, we're going to also go over some stuff with the push cursor button and the inner and outer scroll rings. And we'll give you a little bit of information about what all this information within here means. So first thing we're going to do, you have the GPS display. You have your airport and your aircraft, which is where we're currently at. I pre-programmed in just a quick flight from LZU to PDK so I can show you some of the information that you'll find on the left-hand side of the GPS display, but we're not going to actually fly a flight today. That'll be in some upcoming videos. Okay, the first button that we're going to look at is the RNG button, or range button, and basically all that does is it just zooms your map view in and out. The up arrow zooms you out, so you can get an expanded overview of the area or airspace that you're flying in gives you a little bit of detail this basically covers the north georgia area and you can scroll out to 500 nautical miles the bottom button will zoom you back in and will zoom you into i believe 1500 feet so that's basically all the range button does the little D with the arrow through it is the direct to waypoint button. We'll go over that in a later video, but what it basically does is if you're flying with live air traffic control, for instance, I use VATSIM, and if I'm flying a flight plan that has multiple waypoints in it, and the air traffic controller comes over the air and says, Delta 1055, fly direct, whatever waypoint, I can hit this direct to button, which will pull up my flight plan, and then I scroll down to that waypoint, hit this again, and then hit the enter button. Then it will bypass the waypoints that are in between my aircraft and that waypoint that I've been told to fly direct to, and it just flies direct to that airport. The next button is the menu button, and it's just associated with some of the sub-displays that are within the flight plan menu. We'll go over that again in a later video. The CLR button, or clear button, when you press and hold it down, makes you go back to the default GPS display. So let's say we're zoomed out all the way to 500 nautical miles, and I want to come back to the default. Just press and hold down CLR, drops you back down to the 10 nautical mile zoom. The ENT or enter button just basically validates your choice of options found in some of the sub menus of the GPS. Down here at the bottom of the GPS display, you'll see this little blue area that says nav. 
and this navigates the basic submenus of the GPS. So how you access those is you're going to use these inner and outer rings around the push cursor button. Basically you just hover your mouse over to access the menus themselves you're going to hover over the outer ring here and you're going to click once and it pulls up the first submenu. And this is just basically information related to the airport and the area immediately surrounding you. And then it, there are seven different pages and you scroll through those pages using the inner ring of the push cursor button. The first page we have up here is just basically the airport information. It has the four letter identifier, KLZU. It's a public airport with a asphalt or concrete runway because it's a basically a pink dot with the runway in it. If it were just a pink circle with a runway in it, then that denotes that it's either a grass or dirt runway. Next box shows us the facility city and region, basically Gwinnett County Briscoe Field, Lawrenceville, Georgia. Position is the GPS position of the center of the airport. Elevation, which is 1,061 feet. The fuel that is available here, in this case it's Avgas. Main approach is an ILS approach, and there's no information in the radar in the airspace. Looking over to the next view, or the next page, we have an overview of the airport itself. This is the ATIS, again the elevation and the length of the runway, and the actual runway numbers. We have runway 7 and 25. The runway is 5,996 feet long, 100 feet wide. It's an asphalt surface runway, and it operates full time. Next menu brings us um, radio frequencies for basically approach, your airport ATIS, clearance deliveries, departure ground tower, CTAF, Unicom, and the frequency for the ILS on runway 25. Next window pulls up approaches, and in this case it's just showing the VOR DME approach for run runway 7. And for transition, it's just vectors, which means ATC is going to vector you in on that approach. This page shows you the nearest intersection to you. In this case, it's India Bravo Bravo Uniform Whiskey, little blue triangle. And this is a waypoint along the different airways, the high altitude airways and low altitude airways that we fly in shows the specific region that intersection is in, which is K7. Also lists the nearest VOR and the position of this intersection. Next page of the menu gives us the nearest non-directional beacon, which is Tango X-Ray. And it's just a little circle with little pink dots surrounding it. Facility and region again is Gwinnett. It's in K7, its position and its frequency. The last page of the menu shows us the closest VOR to our location. In this case, it's PDK, which is in the Peachtree, Atlanta area, region K7, variance, position, and frequency. That was the first page, and the number of submenus is denoted by the number of rectangles. So we've already looked at this one. We're going to go ahead and look at this menu next within this rectangle. So we're going to go back over scroll over twice and this pulls up a page that has the nearest airports to you the current since we're already in lzu of course it's going to be listed on the top new golf alpha 9 is the next closest airport to us 10.7 nautical miles away has a 2600 foot grass or dirt runway and you notice there's a little scroll bar here. You can't scroll with your mouse to get through it. If you want to see the other airports listed in here, you would push the push cursor button, and you can see that highlights that. And then basically you would scroll down using your mouse, and you can see all the other airports that are listed that are closer, that are close to you. Next page shows basically a list of the nearest intersections, bearings, distances. Next page is your NDBs with the bearing distances and frequencies. Next page is your nearest VORs. You've got the PDK VOR, the Dobbins Air Reserve Base VOR, Atlanta, which is Hartsfield, Athens, 
Rome, Georgia, Macon, and has their bearing distance and frequencies. Final page just gives you the nearest airspace that you're located in or already within. In this case, we're in Gwinnett County, Briscoe Field. We're inside the airspace of Atlanta Center and Atlanta Approach, Departure, etc. And those are the little submenus that are shown here in this blue nav bar. And just to get out of that, just hit the clear button, it brings you back to the default GPS page. On the bottom of the GPS, I have several buttons over here. And go over those real quick. The first one is NRST or nearest. And it's actually just a simpler way to pull up these menus here that we just previously went over. So that's really all that does. It's just an easier way to access those menus. BS is the Omni Bearing Selector. We're going to go over that in a later video because it's a little bit too complicated. It just has to do with navigating and setting up your approaches and stuff like that. We'll go over that later. MSG is the message button. The GPS will flash messages to you while you are in flight and on the ground, and those will show up right here. So in place of the word off, it's going to flash MSG. And when you see the flashing MSG, just hit the button. It'll pull up a message box, and it will give you the message whether you're inside airspace, approaching airspace, etc., etc and then just press message to continue if there's additional messages because you can get multiple messages at one time coming across when you just press it when there's no more messages the box closes pl is the flight plan button you push that that just brings up the active flight plan within your gps in this case it's lzu to pdk peach tree to cab and gives you the uh, distance the this bearing and the cumulative distance if we were flying waypoints it would be this would be the cumulative miles that you've flown and terr is the terrain button and that just basically shows the terrain that is around you so we can see lake lanier up north of us here and scroll out a little bit further we have the north georgia mountains and then the smoky mountains kind of continue up into the northeast so that's the terrain button proc is the procedures button and that just basically pulls up our different procedures for flying approaches whether it be rnav or ils We'll go over that in a, another video later when we actually get up in the air and fly a short flight and show you how to program procedures and stuff into the GPS. Up here in the upper left we have DTK which is the direct track to the waypoint or destination. Basically, if we want to fly from where we are right now to PDK we want to fly on a 254 heading. Track is the current track of the aircraft or direction that we are pointed in, whether we're on the ground or in flight. In this case, we're pointed 11 degrees. IS is distance, and that's just basically the distance to the destination or next waypoint within your flight plan. TE is the estimated time to the waypoint or destination based on your current ground speed and then GS is actually your ground speed. Here on the left, we have some uh, visual information. The first one is WPT or Waypoint. That is either the destination airport if you're flying direct, or if you're flying a flight plan that has multiple waypoints, it would be the next nearest waypoint to you. BRG is bearing or the compass direction of the waypoint or destination airport that you're flying to next. CPS is course to steer and that is the compass heading needed to intercept the track to the waypoint or destination. Basically it's the ideal heading that will bring you back on this course if you happen to stray off course. TA is the estimated time of arrival to the next waypoint or destination in local time. Basically, the time that's on your 
clock in the cockpit. SR is the vertical speed to reach and it calculates the number of feet per minute that you would need to descend to reach the next waypoint if you have a altitude restriction or to reach the runway. KE is the track angle error, it shows you in degrees how far off course you are in relation to your waypoint or destination. In this case, we're 117 degrees off course. TK is the cross track error. That actually shows you in nautical miles how far off course you are to the left or right of your intended flight track. And it's also visualized in this little area in the bottom of the GPS. So you can either use this as a reference or just use this is the actual numerical reference. That will do it for this video. Again, this is just the basics of the Garmin GPS 500 as used in Flight Simulator 10 and Flight Simulator 2004. I would appreciate a comment, thumbs up, please subscribe. It shows that you are enjoying my content and gives me incentive to bring more content to you in the future. Once again, this is Michael with the Sky's the Limit Aviation Channel. Wishing you a great evening, and we'll see you at the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.